a company specialized on heating, ventilation and air conditioning, must deal with different type of building, different sizes, different architecture and different heights. When designing a heating system, we have to take in consideration the height of the building and the volume of our installation to make sure that we choose the right pressurization vessels. If you look at these buildings, you will see one of them is very tall. One, it's a little bit larger. So the tall and the very larger one got the same volume, yet we have to consider different aspects when design the heating system. Some buildings have the plant room in a basement, but some of them might have it on the roof, or some of them have some special room even inside the buildings to be used for boilers and for pressurization unit. As I said before, when designing a heating system, I have to take in consideration the volume of the installation and the height of the building to avoid pressure issues. Now, this is the building I choose to deal with today. I will explain through my own perspective how I think a building should be equipped with the HVAC equipment and also I want to share some of my technical experience that I gain across years. This is how a heating plant room looks like. You have the main water intake which supplies water to the pressurization unit and you will see the pressurization unit have an internal water tank which is supplied through a valve that is controlled by a floating switch. Now, as you will see, the ball in a tank will allow the water to go until the tank fills. Then, you will stop the valve which will restrict the water to go into a tank. That controls the water level into the tank. Underneath, just below the tank, you have two pumps. Those pumps are activated by the pressurization unit controller which controls the pressure into the heating system. A good engineer will always include manometers in his design because you want to know the pressure into the system and you do not want to rely only on the pressurization unit electronic monitoring control because that one can burn and then you will be blindfolded. After you finish your system installation and did all the relevant tests, it is time to fill the system with heating agent, I mean water. To do this, you don't have to run the pressurization unit to stress the pump. It will be a good idea to use the bypass to fill the system and to enable the pressurization unit only after the system is full. To do that, you have to open the primary, primary valve to allow the water to reach the secondary valve from the bypass. If everything is ok, you have to open the second valve which will allow the water to gain access to the installation and then slowly the system will start filling up. Gravitation acts on water and by watching the gauges you can see while the system fills up the gauges gain in pressure. We know that for every 10 meters we will gain one bar in pressure. So this building is 30 meters high. When the water will reach the last level we are supposed to have on the gauge the reading of three bars. After we make sure the system it is full, we will close the valves of the bypass and we will enable the pressurization unit. We set up the pressurization unit and then the pressurization unit 
will take over, will automatically control and monitor the pressure into the heating system. The high pressure must be very well looked at because we don't want to exceed the pressure relief valve capability to hold the pressure into the system. The pressurization unit, it is interlocked with the pump and with the boiler. So when the pressurization unit will read the correct pressure, then will enable the pump and will enable the boiler as well. Then the boiler start working. Slowly the heating agent start to heat up. The pressure will increase as well on the flow and on the return. The pressure vessels are pressurized at 3.3 bars and as the pressure into the system reached 3.3 bars the pressure vessels will start working if the pressure will increase further. We all know that there is a relation between the temperature pressure and volume and because the temperature rose at 70 degrees Celsius the water expands and if the volume cannot be increased then the pressure will be increased. In our case the well-designed pressure vessels will absorb the extra volume generated by the heating process. So the pressure vessels will allow to the water volume to increase or decrease as per heat demand. As you will see, if some offices will go off, then it will be a less quantity of water to be heated, then the extra volume into the installation will decrease. If towards the end of the day, the boiler will start slowly its activity, lowering the temperature, then the pressure will decrease more. I'm sorry, the water volume will decrease more. And then the pressurization vessel will keep the pressure constant. It will be a small variation, but not as much as it will be without a pressure vessel. Let's say we are misfortunate enough so one of our pressure vessel will fail. In that case, the system elasticity will be reduced. The capability to absorb extra volume will be reduced and the effect will be filled by the system in pressure. When the system will go on full load, the pressure recorded by the pressurization unit will be much higher than normal because the pressure vessels won't absorb enough quantity of water to keep the pressure constant. The pressure will rise until the pressurization unit will sense that the pressure is dangerously high and it will trigger the alarm. As the boiler it is interlocked with the pressurization unit, the boiler will be turned off for safety. As you will see here, the high pressure over exceed its limit and because of this, the pressurization unit, which is set by you, will hold the system off. In real world, bad things happen and it has happened to me. Let's say an engineer will turn to the premises and instead to have a look at pressurization unit properly and at the pressure vessels, it will feel comfortable only to log onto pressurization unit and to increase the high pressure limit and by mistake it will increase it above the pressure release valve capability to hold the pressure. Because the pressurization unit doesn't sense any alarm, the pressurization unit controller will enable the pump and the boiler and the boiler will start heating the heating agent again. Obviously, the pressure 
will start to increase. We already reached 4.7 bars. We are approaching the limit where the pressure relief valve won't be able to hold the water into the system. Also, the pressure vessels are stressed to the maximum. The critical pressure has been reached. The pressure vessels cannot swallow more volume and the bellows inside are excessively pressurized and some of them might fail. So the system will lose more elasticity. Minutes later, the pressure went over 5.1 bars, which means the pressure release valve can be activated at any time. Finally, the pressure release valve has been activated. Water is pouring in a plant room, a lot of steam and sometimes even the fire alarm can be triggered. Nobody know what happened because nobody goes into the plant room. So the people in the offices finish their work, turn off the heat and slowly, slowly, even in this condition, the pressure start dropping. The plant room is a mess. Nobody know anything about. The building, it is still warm and the heating installation, it is still warm. But the pressure goes down and there's no more water coming from the boiler. However, the plant room, it is full of water. So, now the installation gets cooler and cooler. Finally, the end of the program. The boiler turn off, the pump turn off, and when this happened, the pressure into the system which has not been yet compensated by the pressurization unit goes very low. The pressurization unit sense the low pressure and it start refilling the system until it reached the normal pressure. When the system reached 3.3 bars as per the settings which you choose when you design the system, the pressurization will stop. The second morning, the boiler is turned on and the heating system start heating itself again. As the temperature raises, the gain in the temperature quickly goes up and it reach the point where the pressure relief valve start pouring again water in a plant room. The plant room is inundated. It is a mess. Nobody know because nobody went in a plant room. It is in a basement or above on the roof. It's all because an engineer choose to increase the high pressure limit, which it is a very costly mistake because the pressure release valve will allow the water to flood the store because the pressurization unit is not cutting the boiler before that bad things to happen. There is another level of protection. The pressurization unit normally will fill the system only 5, 10 or 20 times. It is up to you. You decide how much um, how to set the pressurization unit. I usually choose to set the filling time for 10 times. After 10 times, the pressurization unit will go on alarm, telling you that you reach the maximum number of filling the system with heating agent. Because the pressurization unit, it is interlocked with the boiler, under such alarm, the boiler and the pump will be turned off. The system will cool down and the pressure will, do will drop below the limits and then you will get air into the system. 
because if the pressure drop below 3 bars it is obvious that the water will be replaced with air because the air valves will allow the water to go inside. Then the building will get very cooler and the owner will call a technician, maybe another technician, not the one which made the mistake. And the last technician that comes have to deal with all the mess done by a little mistake done by an engineer which instead to check the pressure vessels and everything else he rush himself to alter the settings which was done by someone that designed the system and that was a bad practice. Thank you. Goodbye.